Good evening, everyone. And uh, I'd like to first thank the Sisters of Nefertiti for um, allowing me to speak to you tonight. It's an honor to be here. I'd like to first start out with um, uh, a poem that I wrote actually last year. Um, there was an event that was going on here on campus, and I think it was Drum for Peace and Poetry for Peace. So I thought it would be appropriate tonight on this occasion as well. <clears throat> and it's called Peace in the 21st Century. Peace in the 21st Century. Tossing two fingers to the air, hollering deuces to my homies. <laughs> what is peace? A man or woman chooses to leave its entire family in exchange for war and hostility, all in the name of protecting our country. Peace. A state of mind. The ability to have the security that I can live in total harmony. What is peace? Chasing after American dreams and imitation of life dictating my reality? Peace. Taking responsibility for all the unforgiveness I've held on to, causing division and animosity among family. What is peace? Thinking racism is based on whether I see color? How about we embrace the difference and learn what we can gain from one another? Peace. Is it religion or creed, my sexuality, attaining a PhD? Or is the common denominator you plus me equaling in tranquility? What is peace? Taking the time to, to smile, anger change to denial, a heart longing to be reconciled? Peace. And what is my contribution? Is how I present my life a daily restitution. Around this time of year, um, I can imagine that there are hundreds of speeches given and sermons preached in remembrance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A man with a dream, or vision if you will, centered around a very simplistic and seemingly harmless word, peace. When asked to speak at this uh, MLK Peace Dinner, <coughs> excuse me, I thought to myself, what more can we possibly say this year that we haven't said in years past? But then I remembered an old phrase that I've heard a number of times, repetition is the mother of learning. And so here I am with you this evening, the year 2012, 44 years after the passing of Dr. King, to share my thoughts on peace. I was very curious of what uh, people envisioned when they heard the words peace, so um, I asked some of my friends and actually went on the internet to see what, uh, what I Googled if I put the word peace in. And what came up was Jesus, a dove, peace symbols, large bodies of water, serenity, etc. I grew concerned of why I thought of peace as the most nonviolent, violent act there is. Peace has the ability to stand in the face of fear, worry, adversity, injustice, even death. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was beaten beyond recognition and nailed to a cross. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, both assassinated. Nelson Mandela, jailed for 27 years. Mm. These were peacemakers unafraid to stand in the face of a violent world. Our country has spent trillions of dollars on the military, not to mention the number of tax dollars that we spent on our own local law enforcement, all for the sake of peace. We have churches on what seems like every corner encouraging us to visit their place of worship to experience some inner peace. We pay psychiatrists big money to help us to find a sense of peace. Sounds to me like there is no real price tag on peace, but there is a great sacrifice to have it. I would even dare to say that some of uh, your parents and talking to the students are sending you here so that you might have a, a better opportunity at some future financial peace. 
<laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt said, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work at it. I believe that real peace comes from within. It's a conscious decision, decision that one makes every day we swing our legs out of the bed. Peace is an attitude that we choose to wear and an atmosphere that we choose to walk in. Everyone has a part to play and everyone is a beneficiary of creating a place where unity can be attained. Respect is a huge part of creating an environment of peace. Respect for human rights and equal equality of life, respect for cultural diversity, and respect for the earth and each other. That might mean that we need to educate ourselves on issues of global concerns. That might mean that we need to invade our comfort zone with someone that looks different from us. When we choose to use the words, I don't see color, we choose not to see the beauty in whom we were created. We are one. And we are better together than we are apart. In the midst of economic despair, there is a place for peace. I imagine that uh, this is where creativity has the most potential to have life. We need to be creative in our own lives, creatively thinking about our environment, using resources to sustain our planet, and creatively thinking of how we can live in unity across cultures and racial barriers. As we engage the next generation of dreamers, it would be good to equip them with some leadership and entrepreneurship skills so that the focus is not just finding a job, but empowering the next generation to create jobs. When we are busy helping the solution, we eliminate the need to become a part of the problem. Hmm. Part of the strategic plan for St. Mary's College is to diversify the campus, diversify the student body, and diversify faculty and staff. As we continue, to, as we continue the commitment to the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we must first align ourselves as peaceful individuals. We have to believe that we are more alike than we were ever said to be different. And we must understand that a strategic plan is only as good as each individual's efforts to execute it. Mm -hmm. I have uh, my own little personal definition of peace using each letter of the word peace. And because I'm an artist, visuals, I'm a visual person. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Providing equality, advocating for justice, cultivating unity, and educating our youth to do the same. Thank you very much. Nice. Good job, Pammy.